Mine wouldn't be lean in. It would be step up and into yourself. Because this is the truth. There is no real doing in the world without being first. For me, being, your presence, your connection to yourself and that which is greater than yourself is far more important than what you do, but also is the thing that fuels what you do. Right. And I know that one of the things that is so important for what happens here at the graduate school is that you have leaders who are self-actualized and understand what your contribution to change the world can be. You can only do that if you know yourself. You can only do that unless you take, unless you, you cannot do it unless you take the time to actually know who you are and why you are here. Now I happen to know for sure that every human being comes, comes called. And that the calling goes beyond um, the definition of what your job is. That there is innate, there is an innate supreme moment of destiny for everybody. And that's why when I was in Baltimore, I could feel this isn't it, mm -hmm. this isn't it. And then in Chicago, uh, after 25 years of success on the show, I started to feel this isn't it, there's something more, something more, something more that's calling me to what is the supreme moment. And everybody has that. And you cannot um, fulfill it unless you have a level of self-awareness to be connected to what is the inner voice or the instinct, I call it your emotional GPS system, uh, that allows you to make the best decisions for yourself. And every decision that has profited me mm -hmm. has come from me listening to that inner voice first. And every, dis every time I've gotten into a situation where I was in trouble, it's because I didn't listen to it. I overrode that voice, that instinct, with my own, with my own head, my own thinking. I tried to rationalize it, I tried to tell myself, but you know, okay, you're gonna make a lot of money, oh no. <laughs> and so I am, I sit here, uh, you know, profitable, successful, by all the definitions of the world. But what really, really, really resonates deeply with me is that I live a fantastic life. My inner life is really intact. My, I live from the inside out. And so everything that I have, I have because I let it be fueled by who I am and what I realize my contributions to the planet could be. And what my real contribution is, it looks like I'm a, I was a talk show host. It looks like, you know, I'm in the movies. It looks like, you know, I have a network. But my real contribution, the reason why I'm here, yep. is to help connect people to themselves and the higher ideas of consciousness. I'm here to help raise consciousness. So my television platform was to help raise consciousness. In the beginning, I didn't realize that. I thought, oh my God, I got a show! <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't until, um, I was interviewing the Ku Klux Klan one day, and can you imagine all the great lessons come from things that are, that are sometimes challenging. I was interviewing the Ku Klux Klan, and I thought, as an African American, oh, I'm gonna get them, I'm gonna show for every Jewish person, for every person who's been uh, discriminated against. And during the commercial break, I saw the Klan exchanging uh, signals and looks at each other. And then something inside, that instinct, I thought, I am doing nobody any good. They are loving this. They are using me. I think I'm doing an interview. They are using me. I did not know it at the time. I brought them on, actually, those same guys back in, uh, for my last year. And they told me that they used that show for their recruitment. I could feel that happening. And I made a decision. Uh, after that show, I'll never do anything like that again. I'll never let my platform be right. used, and I will not be so. used. And at the time in the 90s, early 90s, everybody was doing confrontational television. And I thought I was above the fray. Because I'm not like Jerry Springer, I don't do that. 
<laughs> so in my egoic delusion, I thought because I am not that bad, I'm really not bad. But I was doing confrontational television. I thought I was exposing men with affairs. We happened to have a guy on who was talking about um, how he'd had an affair with his wife and he was crazy enough to come on with his wife and his girlfriend. People ask me, why do people do that? It's because nobody ever asked him. So <laughs> you say, would you come on with your wife and your girlfriend? He goes, sure. Um, <laughs> he was thinking. He was thinking. So he comes on with the wife and the girlfriend. This is a life-changing moment for me, the clan and this woman. Mm -hmm. The wife is there, he's in the center, and the girlfriend. And he tells his wife, he announces, we were live television at the time, and he announced that to, to, to the world and to his wife that his girlfriend was pregnant. And I did, you see your face, your mouth's open right there. <laughs> I did exactly that. I went, oh my God. And you could hear the gasp in the audience. And I, and I literally, really, it still makes my eyes water to think about it. I looked at her face and I felt her humiliation. I felt her shame, I felt it. And I said, never again. <clears throat> I will get out of television if I have to do this. And I went and I had a meeting with the producers because I just had the clan before and I got the adulterers here. And uh, <laughs> some uplifting show, I must say. Uh, and I said to the producers, we are gonna change. We're gonna turn this around. Mm -hmm. And I'm no longer gonna be used by television. I am going to use television. What a concept. I'm going to use television as a force for, for, I didn't say at the time for good, I said, you know, let's think about what we want to say to the world and how we want to use this as a platform to speak to the world. How do we want to see the world change? How do we want to impact the world and then let all of our shows really be focused and centered around that? I then said to the producers exactly what I said to you backstage. Mm -hmm. Do not bring me a show unless you have fully thought out what is your intention for doing it. Because if there is, if, if, if there is a religion or a mantra or law that I live by, I live by the third law of motion in physics, which is Stanford, uh, which is <laughs> for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. That is, that, is, that, is, that is my religion. I know that what I'm thinking and therefore going to act on is going to come back to me in, this, in, a, in, a, in a circular motion, just like gravity, like what goes up comes down. And so what also propels the action is the intention. So I don't do anything without being fully clear about why I intend to do it because the intention is going to determine the reaction, the result, or the consequence in every circumstance. I don't care what it is. So I said to my producers, come to me with your intention at whatever it is, whatever shows you're proposing, whatever ideas you're proposing, and then I will decide based upon the intention, do I really want to do right. that? Is this how we want to use this platform? And that really is the secret to why we were number one all those years, is because it was an intention-fueled, intention-based, coming out of purposeful Goodness. programming. Yeah.